So in this video, we're going to be learning mnemonics for these five topics, and then covering some of the questions that go along with them. Now, the first one's going to be a variable, a very important topic in programming, especially object-oriented programming. So we're going to talk about what a variable is, some of the properties that variables have, and what makes them so important. Then we're going to talk about types, what they are, and how they can make our lives a lot easier when used right. Then we'll talk about objects. What is an object? How do we identify objects if they look the same on the outside? And what does it mean if something's statically typed? And what does that have to do with objects? And then we're going to talk about mutability, what it is and why it's important for programmers. And finally, end on states. What is a variable state? How can we look at a variable to find out what state that it's currently in? So get ready. This will be a fun one. So our first mnemonic is going to be a shot glass. And I chose a shot glass to represent the topic of a variable because sort of like a variable, a shot glass has many different styles that it comes in. But once you buy one from like a gift shop or something like that and you put it in your cupboard, it stays the same every time you pull it out. You can always reference it. It will be the same height, have the same design on it. But inside of the shot glass, it can contain many different type of, you know, liquors or juices or sodas or whatever you put in your shot glasses. And just like a variable, it's it's something that we define like a shot glass, a solid outside that's always the same, but it can have a variable inside, the variability of the different drinks that are inside of it. Okay, so what is a variable? Now, a variable is any kind of characteristic, a number or a quantity that can change over time, that can be measured or counted. So think like age or income. They're variables because the value can change over time, but something like a birthday or an eye color isn't a variable because it stays the same throughout your life. And technically, they're actually reserved memory locations inside of your computer with an ID locator. But as a beginner, it's okay to think of them as sort of like an informational Tupperware that can scale up to hold different objects. So I think about like, like almost like my grandma's Tupperware party or something where you have Tupperware that comes in different sizes, but this would be like one uh, you know, sandwich Tupperware container that can expand, become bigger or smaller and hold whatever size, number or quantity that we need inside of it. Our next mnemonic is going to be a liquor bottle in the shape of a typewriter, and it's going to be containing whiskey. Now, the reason I chose this as the mnemonic for types is because typewriters, first off, sound kind of similar to types, but also because whiskey is a classification of a type of liquor. So therefore, there can be many different brands that make different types of whiskey, but whiskey is separate from another liqueur, like vodka, in the same way that something like orange juice can be made by many different brands, but it's always going to be orange juice if it's made from oranges. It's not going to be milk or it's not going to be water. So orange juice would be the type. Okay, so what are types? Well, they're classifications, but this time instead of, of whiskey or orange juice, of variables. And Behind the scenes, they're grouped in memory based on their structure. So when you assign different data types to variables, you can store things like integers or decimals or characters, but the variable will have a type, like the shot glass can only hold decimal numbers, for example, or the shot glass can only hold characters from a string, but it can't hold some numbers and some characters. It can only hold one or the other type. Like a shot glass that can only have whiskey in it. You couldn't put any other drinks in it. So in regards to types, you'll often hear that a programming language is either statically typed or dynamically typed. So what does that mean? Well, the static versus dynamic typing is a question about when the variable types are checked by the computer. So statically typed languages are those where the language is checking what type your variables are during compile time, when we're first typing that in and testing the code. Whereas the dynamically typed languages are those which are checking at runtime when somebody goes to actually use our program. So Python is checked at runtime, meaning it's a dynamically typed programming language, which makes it a little bit easier on our end. So we don't have to specify exactly what types things are all of the time while we're writing our code. So our next mnemonic is going to be an individual brand of liquor. Okay, So we have this hierarchy here. You've got liqueurs at the top. It can be all sorts of things. You have these types, which is like whiskey. It could be one special type, but multiple brands. And now we have objects, which are like one brand of whiskey, like Jack Daniels, something like that. And I also want you to imagine a dog tag, like, you know, like a military dog tag, like a warrior would have, an American warrior hanging around the bottle. And that's going to help us remember that each object has a unique ID. There are no two 
bottles of Jack Daniels that are exactly the same in this example. And remember, everything's an object, and every object has its own identity. So this is why we put the dog tag around the bottle, because every object has a unique identifier that's called its identity. And this helps us find it in memory, meaning inside of your computer, it's only in one place. And an object's identity never changes once it's been generated. OK, so let's jump back and talk about what it means for something to be statically typed, because we didn't really touch on that. And what that means is that we don't need to declare the variable before using it. We don't have to declare what the variable's type is. So every variable in Python is an object that we can use. So our next mnemonic is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle who's holding a report card. And the reasoning behind this being the mnemonic for mutability is that a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle has a good metaphor inside of it. It's all about changing on the surface, but not in the core. And that's exactly how the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, came about. So since all of us know that story really well, duh. Ninja Turtles were little turtles, and then they got covered in some like mutagenic ooze, and they became, you know, huge Ninja Turtles. But they're still the same person. So mutability sort of gets at that concept that like they were the same turtles when they were pets as they are when they're big ninjas, but they just went through stages, kind of an evolution from small turtle to big turtle. So what is mutability? Well, it's that process of the report card. So just like a GPA, a variable can change over time, like the grade changing, but it will always be attached to one person. I'm always gonna have my GPA. With mutability, it's kind of like evolution, but you always have this sort of container that's the same, and what's inside the container at each time step you can imagine changing. So our last mnemonic is a butterfly, and it represents the topic of state. And I think this is a great mnemonic to represent state because we all know the story of how a caterpillar can turn into a butterfly. And we can think of them as both the same creature, the same variable, for example, but they're different states that the creature goes through. So we use state in programming to refer to what is contained inside of the variable at this moment or the specified moment. And the logical next question is, how do we find out what's inside of a variable? Well, we wrap it in a function. And we'll learn more about this in the next video. OK, so just to recap, we first started by talking about variables. We talked about how they can be thought of like shot glasses or containers that can hold different things inside of them, how they have special properties, one of them being scalability. And we talked about how they can hold information for later in time to be used later in the code. Then we talked about types, which are groupings of similar variables, variables that have similar properties. And we talked about how these types can help us understand how to work with variables and simplify our lives. And then we talked about how Python is dynamically typed, so we don't have to check these variables during compile time. That will be done during runtime. And then we talked about objects. Now, everything in Python is an object, which was an important concept. And then we talked about how objects are all unique. They have a special, unique identifier, and they're stored in a special, unique spot in the memory of our computer. Then we talked about mutability, which is a process of evolution. It's the evolution of a variable over time, in the same way that you can have a Tupperware container that may go into your fridge over and over again. Like Mutability is the concept that the same variable can be holding different things at different times. And then we finally ended by talking about state, which is asking specifically what is inside of that variable at a specific time. And then we talked about how Python gives us some special tools to find out what's inside of the variables at any given time. So I think we've got some of the concepts down. Maybe we should jump back into some more how-to examples. See you in the next video. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.